traveling and art? Or how does traveling affect the artwork that you create or the style that you make? The world around you and the experiences you have can be expressed greatly in artwork that you make. And a great way to find inspiration, which is something I have discussed in another video, a great way to find inspiration is to get out in the world and go places and, and travel. And you don't have to have a lot of money to travel or go places. You can just go to another end of town or you can get a bus ticket to go to a different city or maybe even take a ride in the train and just sit there and look out the window and look at the landscapes and just think of how you've gotten to where you are in life and the process in which you create your art and how the things that have happened to you in life and how those are connected and just look at the world and see everything and all of its color and shapes and by getting out and traveling and exploring the world around you it will help give you a different perspective and much more positive perspective on life and it will help you find a lot of inspiration to continue drawing or anything that you're doing that's creative and I remember when I was younger sitting on the school bus and I'd look out the window and I'd think of what was going on at home and even with all the bad things that were happening I would draw an inspiration to find positivity in the world I saw around me and I'd look out the window and I'd see you know, the landscape and the trees and I would watch as the world would pass me by quickly as the bus was traveling down the road and with each bus stop when I first started school it was like a whole new experience because I was meeting new people and I took those experiences and I added that to my artwork and I remember sitting there with a piece of paper and I would sketch out stick figure wars or I would draw dinosaurs or anything mechanical or be creative in any way and as the bus continued down the road I would continue sketching and drawing things and there were times where we would constantly hit a lot of bumps and it would be difficult to draw and although it was difficult to draw like that with the bus hitting all those bumps and these bumpy roads it didn't make it easier when I got home and there wasn't as much you know, movement everywhere to cause my hand to make uneven lines and with all that was going on at home I enjoyed drawing in the bus it helped me escape from what was going on at home and it allowed me to just to fully express myself and I always preferred drawing in the morning on the bus because all the other students were very tired and it was early in the morning and school it the school bus was really quiet at that time and it was very peaceful I remember looking out the window and I'd see the fog and where I lived at the time was out in the country and this was in Florida there was a lot of cow fields in this area and you know pastures of just emptiness or there would be many areas of just which looked like to me at that age completely deserted you know I'd see petrified limbs and trees laying around in the area I lived in there was an occasional palm tree but not very many it's mostly just fields of grasslands and there was some, was some cows here and there and I remember uh, when I was uh, at a younger age than this even I would go out in the fields and I would follow the steps of where the cows walked and 
I would, um, you know, just think about what they were doing in life, you know. I was a young kid, and I always had, you know, all kinds of strange ideas. When you think about it now, I always wondered about things that were so small and seemed so insignificant. And I would sit on the bus, and I would try to draw the cows or the birds that I would see that was landing on the trees, or I would try to draw the petrified limbs of the trees that were laying around. I also remember there were some kids that would ask me what I was drawing, and some of them would judge me or make fun of me, and sometimes they would enjoy what I was drawing, and I would explain to them what it was. And as the bus driver continued driving, I would look out the window and I would see small ponds and all the lily pads, and I would have this creative idea, and I would be like, okay, I'm going to draw a frog or... I'm going to draw a flower or something like that. And so I just start sketching it. You know, it's thoughts like this that we often forget. The little details and what's happened in life when we grow up. We've got all these bills and we just get so caught up in everything that we forget a lot of what's happened. And I remember when I was so young at this age, you know, between the age of, you know, 6 to 13, when all that really mattered was being yourself and having fun and exploring the world. And try not to lose that curiosity in life to explore your own mind and to explore the world around you. And I always brought a piece of paper with me wherever I went somewhere on the bus or at school or when I would travel with uh, family members to different places I remember I would take paper with me and we had to take a car ride to see my grandparents and it was about a three hour drive and I would sit there and scribble all kinds of stuff on there and I remember my mom she would look at me and say now what are you drawing and a lot of times I would try to draw this epic looking type of stuff where it was no dragons and swords and everything I was always into that medieval stuff and all the dark ages and I watched a lot of that on the uh, history channel learned a lot from it and I would sit there in the car and look out the window as we were driving down the highway and everybody was really quiet in the car and I would just lay there on my back and I would at an angle glance up and just look at the sky and I would look at the clouds and try to see different images in the clouds and just let my mind wander and eventually I would fall asleep and I'd wake up and uh, sometimes there would be clouds there or it'd be an empty sky or a rainbow Or I'd wake up and I'd be inside looking at the ceiling as I would have slept through the whole car ride. The car ride there seemed so long. And the car ride back, it seemed to go by so fast. And I think when you're young, you get so excited to do something that the more excited you are, the longer it seems to take for whatever it is that you're wanting to happen to happen and it was a sometime it depended on the uh, highway we took but the drive usually took about three hours to my grandparents and they live by uh, the beach close to the area and as the car ride continued I um, would continue drawing and looking out the window and thinking of the world around me and just creating this entire world inside of my mind of creativity and just imagining all the things that can happen in life and all the possibilities. Just thinking of all the things I can draw and create. And it didn't matter what type of pencil or pen I had to draw with. It was, that was never my concern. It was 
as long as I had something, something to make a mark in the paper, to make a mark in the world, to create something. I was in the moment, and I was completely, fully in the moment, enjoying what was going on. I wasn't worried about any pain or negativity in my life. All that mattered was me, that paper, and that pen or pencil, and thinking of all the creative things that I could explore in the world around me. I always enjoyed the car ride to my grandparents. It was such a long drive, it seemed. Three hours at my age now goes by in a snap of fingers. Time seems to just fly by as you age, but when you're that young, time, time seems to stop. You think that things will be forever, and that things never end. And as we kept driving down the highway, I would look out the window and I'd see passing cars, passing buses and semis and different types of vehicles. And I would ask my, ask my mother um, what this car was or what that car was. We would occasionally play games that were anytime I seen a red truck or a red car, I would try to count how many I seen the entire drive to my grandparents. And I remember a time I counted several thousand vehicles of the color red. I have a choice, of course, chose this color because red was my favorite color, always has been. And so I would count every car that passed me by. One, two, three, four, on and on until I got into thousands. And I think my mom, uh, she had me do that because occasionally I would get ornery and I'd kind of feel restless because I was cooped up in the car for so long. And I started acting hyper and she would give me something to do to keep my mind busy. And that was usually when I didn't have any paper or pencils with me. And she'd tell me, Jacob, Count all the red trucks that pass by, or count how many cows you see, or count how many birds fly by, and I would go ahead and count them. And as we get older, we tend to lose that enjoyment in life of being in the moment and not worrying so much about what's around us. And as the car ride continued, we would go over bridges, and I would build a map in my mind of how that bridge was built and, and how they done it with all the different machinery and I'll just lay there and wonder in awe of how something could be built and I remember when I was uh, about 8 years old I would see a really large long bridge and I would ask my mom how did they connect that together how did they do that I always ask so many questions and it often drove my grandpa crazy because I would continue asking why things were the way they were. Why are they like this or why are they like that? And he always had an answer and eventually I would get to the point to where he would say, that's just the way it is. <laughs> and um, it's good memories. And as we continued traveling in the car, we got closer to my grandparents, and we will stop by this uh, place called the Waffle House. And I always enjoyed going there because they had these really large waffles that you know, they just cover in syrup. And I remember just eating so many of those that I my stomach was just stuffed, and. My mom would always tell him to hold off on the sugar because it would make me you no know, extra hyper. And But she would let me do this sometimes because it was kind of a, a reward for me or a treat because of everything that was going on in my life. And so I would sit down at the table 
after the uh, car ride. We're, we were almost to my grandparents, but we had another maybe 30 minutes. And so I sat down at the table and they'd ask me what I wanted and I would tell them. And if it was for breakfast, I would you know, tell them what I wanted. And um, I would say, I want eggs and bacon. And I remember them asking me, how do you want your eggs? And I had always tell them, cooked. I didn't really have the concept at that age to you know, think about how I wanted them cooked. I just knew that I wanted eggs and I was hungry. And then she would look at me again and say, no, how do you want your eggs? And I would tell her again, I want them cooked. She would smile at the waitress and shake her head. And she would go off and cook the meal. And then my mom would look at me and she'd say, Jacob, you're supposed to tell him how you want the eggs. And I remember my uh, grandma, the times we would go out to the, the uh, Waffle House to eat. And uh, my grandma always had this way of telling you that you're, you're being goofy. And you would know when she gave you that look. And so, as I was sitting there in the Waffle House, they waiting for the food to be done. The waitress would come out with the food and I would be so hungry and I just couldn't wait to take my fork and cut into the waffles. And I remember looking at the waffles and looking at all the syrup the filling was filling up each of the square spaces in the waffles. And I would get my butter and cover them with butter. And just I would I would take the waffles and cut them up into many pieces and then then I would eat it. And I remember when I was really young, I used to just take the fork and pick the whole waffle up and and just eat the whole thing. But my mother and grandmother wasn't very happy with that because I'd get syrup everywhere, especially all over my clothes. And then once we got to my grandparents, it was. It was paradise. I would go to the beach. I would spend time with my cousins and my grandfather and my grandmother and my mom and sister. And it was so enjoyable to just go to the beach and lay down underneath the sun and just to relax and completely forget about everything around me that was negative. I was in the moment. All that mattered to me was laying on that beach in the sand under the blue skies as wind gently blew over me and a cool breeze came over me and the sun was shining down keeping me warm and I would hear off in the distance the seagulls and the sound of the ocean and the waves crashing and with curiosity, I would always go out and walk near the shore and pick up seashells. And I would just look out in the distance and think, how did these get here? And how did they get shaped like this? Always asking so many questions at such a young age. And I think that as we get older, we tend to forget the details in life. We as I said before, I lose that curiosity, and I would continue walking down the beach as the waves crashed. I would look at my feet, and I would step into the sand, and I would see that it would make the shape of my foot, and then the waves would come up, and my footprint would disappear. So I try to make more footprints, and then they keep disappearing. And then I would wade out into the water a little bit, but not too far, and I would get larger shells and I was told to put my ear up to them and, and my mom said that if you hold your ear to it you can hear the ocean and so I did and, and at that age I believed it and so I continued collecting shells that I would bring home with me to my grandparents and I would sit down and draw them and it was a great way to practice freehand drawing or drawing a subject or an object that's in front of you. I would collect shells of different colors, different shapes. 
And I remember having just huge buckets of them. And I had to be careful because I'd be digging through the buckets and I'd sometimes cut my hands on it. And it was very painful because of the salt water. But at that age, you're, you can be pretty stubborn. And you're so excited in the moment to do something that you know, something like a cut or an injury doesn't bother you if you're happy enough with what you're doing. And so even with a cut on my hand and band-aid covering it, it seemed to me that I was invincible. Completely invincible as long as I had a box of band-aids to heal and fix everything. And so I would wait out in the water and you know I'd have a cut on my hand or somewhere on my shin. And it would burn and sting because of the salt water, but it didn't bother me to the extent that it does when you're older because you're just, you know, as I said, you're just in the moment. And I would continue searching for the biggest seashell I could find and always look for the ones that were red seashells, ones that had most of the, the uh, seashell that was still intact. And I would try to collect them. I would come across fish that were swimming underneath the water and little minnows that were everywhere. And I would look at the minnows and I would try to remember what they looked like. And I would try to remember what the seashells looked like. The ones that were too big for me to pick up because they were buried beneath the sand and the way the sand held them down. And I wasn't able to get to them because for me to pick them up, I would have had to put my head underneath the water and I wasn't quite able to lift them out from underneath the sand with my head underneath the water. And so I tried to build an image in my head. And I would later go, later go home and try to draw that. And I remember getting in the car and my mother and cousin would always tell me to get the sand off of me because I would just be covered in sand everywhere. <laughs> and I was so excited to go home to work in this drawing or to look at all the seashells I've collected that I would sometimes forget that I had sand all over me and I would jump in the car and I'd have sand everywhere and they'd later on have to vacuum the car out but it was some good times and traveling is I feel that traveling can be important with artwork you don't have to travel the world you don't have to spend a lot of money. But just get out some and go to places. It doesn't matter if you go to a local cafe or a local restaurant. You can go out of town or just spend some time with a family member or friend. Because we often forget those memories and revisiting and re-exploring those times and those areas can bring back good memories that can give you inspiration to create. And it'll help you from ever forgetting those memories. Sometimes in life when we're feeling down and we don't have anything to look forward to, those memories are what can bring us up and take us out of the darkness and do what you want to do. It's your life. Explore it.